Hello everyone and welcome to another podcast episode on MND Fantasy Corner. I'm Duncan and with me as always is my friend Momo. Hello everybody and this will be final episode for book one of Stormlight Archives. We have like I think five chapters only to, to finish. And you know since those five chapters are kind of short. But to be honest, there are a lot of information, this informations discovered in these five chapters. But you know, if this episode is a little bit shorter than usual, I think we might fill it with, you know, some overall thoughts of Duncan about about this book. Man, do you know where I got here the most excited? Where? When I saw that table in the end. Oh yeah. I kind of geeked. I, I man, I, you are so so different than me, man. When I was first time reading this book, you know what I did with that table, man? You skipped it? Yes. <laughs> I didn't even, I was like, oh, just so far, okay, I don't give a fuck about this. I just cared about what was happening. You are so different than me, man. Man, that table is like, I don't know, it's like treasure Everything to full you, of information. Yeah, I, I know, I know you. But you know, thing is, we don't have dead rattles in, in these chapters. So, you know, we can dive straight into actual chapters. Yeah, but here three chapters are kind of about Yasna and Shalan, so maybe we could just go first with that, because I think that was the most important one. Yeah, and you know, especially in first one, a little bit later also, like Shalan thought process is the things that I explained you, you know, a couple of episodes, or maybe even in last episode, uh, about Yasna tasting jam and touching it. And this is exactly, you know, how Shalan figured out that Yasna actually soul casted without actual soul casted. I don't know if it you remember definitely... when I was explaining to you. Yeah, it was definitely logical. Yeah, and you know, it showed that Shalan is very capable. To me, what was interesting here is that that spren, I think this is the first time where it started to talk to Shalan like directly. Yes, but it's very important, man, what it required her to say. It required something deep about her, some but truth. But truth is the most, most important, because so, here is the hint for future. Shalan order is a little bit different different than all other orders because other orders I, I, we were talking about this they require five ideals those five statements yes shalan spren require instead of those st- uh, ideals they require truths but very deep truths about yourself and do you see why that table in the end is... Uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's very... Uh, like full of information. I connected something in that table with this. We, we will see. You, you probably okay. missed the mark. But we will talk about that table, I think, at the end. It's better. Man, I'm almost 100% sure I didn't miss the mark. So, can I guess something okay, guess. about this? So... Are those spren called truth spren or maybe secret spren? No, they are not called truth spren. Uh, okay, so my first uh, guess of the episode know, is wrong. I, I, I will tell you a hint. Honor spren and spren of Shalan really hate each other. Hmm. Okay, so that's for future. But you know, do you have that table in front of you? Yes, of course. Okay, tell me these primary and secondary divine attributes. You you see them? Yes, of course. The first one, protecting and leading. Yes. That's obviously wind runners, right? Yes. So, tell me of these. What define Shalan as a person the most? I don't know what... Uh... She's artist. And what is artist? Creative. That is one of the things. I think she is that one. The shush. You see this number? Shush? 
And I think this is the the order of uh, Shalash. I think that's her, the blood one. I, I, I think you are right. And you know, like, I, I will not tell you anything about, but for example, I don't know if you realize that Yasna pointed out that she is not the same type of Radiant as Shalan is. I saw that, like, there are two type of orders who are, like, who use soul casting. Yes, they, you know, we, we, I think I already explained you that every order have two, uh, 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 like, primary abilities. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And, then and they, they are share sharing it. every ability with one other order. I get it. So, uh, uh, Shalan Radiant Order and Yasna Radiant Order share uh, uh, together. Share one, something. It's not something, it's you already know what it is. It's their ability to not only soul cast, but to visit that place, Shadeshmar, Shadeshmar, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm, I'm still sorry. And you know, Yasna even said that, you know, her friend doesn't look like, actually she didn't say that it, her friend doesn't look like Shalan, she just, you know, didn't recognize it. I see. But you know, what would you say was this attribute that defined Yasna the most? What do you mean attribute? Of what, of, of, of these? Yes, from, the from table? this list. Uh, she's okay. definitely not loving and healing. I, okay, I so just she say is that. learned and giving. Or maybe wise and careful. I'm between two of those. Is it still not known? Uh, you know, I'm, I, I think it's known, but you know, to be honest, I'm not sure. I never took Man, time to... We are going to crush this. Uh, by but the end of book three, we're going to crush it. Yeah, but uh, it's definitely between learn the giving and and wise and careful. But I think it's learned and giving. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna crack it. I just don't wanna go too deep into this Thank table. You, man, you, we... you're making me feel, you know, shame. I read these books for, you know, like at least three, four times, and you know, I simply didn't pay attention to to some of these things that interest you. Um, uh, you know, it's that that's the beauty of it. Uh, there will be five people reading the same book and they will take something different from it. And who's to say what's important and what's not? Somebody will take, I don't know, some story and they will take some meaning behind it. And that will be important to them. I don't know. That's right. Everybody has their own truth, I guess. I, I, I agree, but you know, you're just making me look bad, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> just relax. <laughs> I'm joking, man. But I don't know, did you get excited when you you realized that Shalan and Yasna are going to Shattered Plains? Yeah, I got excited. I mean, I now there are those ghost bloods. Her father was most likely one of the members of it. Kapsal was also a member of the same order. I mean, it's so... That story is very confused. She killed her father. Yes. I mean, so much got revealed in and these last few chapters. And I was trying to push chapters. you to realize that she killed your father. But, you know, you, you didn't like, get it. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't even know why. So that's everything. You know, I, I, I told you that, you know, Shalan is very complicated at the, at the very beginning. And now I hope, you know, you... Actually, you know, you, you give her a little bit of understanding. I, I know that you disliked her at the beginning because you perceived that she was, you know, a thief. But it's more complicated. And, you know, her killing her father is also a lot more complicated than, you know, it actually seemed at the first sight. Man, my relationship towards Shalan is, went from me hating her to slowly that hating... Uh, I don't know how should I call it, chart, it's started becoming more confused and confused. And in the end, you know, now that I know that she killed her father, now that I know what type of spren she uses, everything, I'm, you know, I'm completely confused with her. You know, you know where I left, man? Where? When, when she finally, you know, when Yasna is ex explaining to her about Voidbringers and Shalan came, I swear, like same conclusion as you. Fucking ash and fire, how could I be so stupid? 
and you had that same exact moment like a couple of episodes ago. Yes, when I, I, I still remember that moment because uh-huh. I was listening to my audio. Yeah, I swear I remembered it when I was reading this. Exactly the same realization that you had. How could I be this fucking blind, man? Yeah, but that was also another confusing thing. So they came to conclusion, we, like they are slaves, kind of right. slaves, and they were not enslaved by mistake. It was intentional. And in my head is like, oh my God, are you guys insane? You are enslaving void bringers. Don't you think that's a little bit dangerous? Because that is nature of people. You defeat them, you can make slaves out of them, and you are thinking in your head, Okay, this is done deal. These guys will never rise again. That is how humanity kind of works. It's I, I didn't find it hard to understand, honestly. But we are definitely dumb. You know, y- Yasna even pointed out that, you know, humans never discard something that, you know, they, they deemed useful. And, you know, these parchments are very, very useful, man. And this also shows how... Truth gets lost over the ages. This was pro, and this is another my question. Okay, so they enslaved them, I assume, in the last desolation. But what about desolation before that? Did they also enslave them then? I, and I, I honestly, he, here is the thing. We we don't know for sure, but that would be dumb, because here is the thing. These desolation, man, they were happening like more and more frequently. So. It, it was even pointed out somewhere that between two last desolation, there was not even decade that passed. And you cannot lose knowledge in decade. Are you but sure? I'm not. Because these battles were so devastating that it's quite possible that in those decade, that in that decade, kind of, you know, knowledge was lost. But it is highly I, unlikely. I cannot imagine two desolation, two desolations being that short apart i i th- that information might be wrong i don't even remember that information it's not wrong you know why why okay we, we will skip now to to last chapter when uh Hoyt is meeting waiting for somebody okay. and who is he waiting for it's talonel of course why because the isolation is coming and you know did i I think we, you know, I kind of nudged you there long time, maybe even in prologue. What happened in desolation to, to these heralds? Why everybody else, why every other herald quitted? Because they are getting tortured. And they, why, you know, how long they are getting tortured? Well, until the next desolation, I'd assume. No. Until no. they break. And when they break, Desolation comes. Okay, so, so that was definitely you could get that from this epilogue. You not only epilogue but prologue. In prologue, as you remember, probably I'm paraphrasing now. When Jezrean and Kelek are speaking, they say that you know they are all broken, and Talenel is only one that never broke. So they decide to leave him for two reasons. First is they cannot bear any more punishment and torture. And second reason is that that they are hoping that, you know, by leaving only him and him never before breaking, this time they will either have a lot of time to prepare or maybe even he will never break. Okay, but that raises a question. If there is, for example, multiple multiple of them being tortured. Only one need to break. Oh. And it rests it. So that is why it's kind of better to have only one of them there. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, but he was holding for quite a long time. You know how exactly much? About 5,000 years? uh, 4,500 years. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, man, he he is badass. He is fucking badass, but, you know, as you probably could notice, he's fucking crazy, man. I think he, he was broken, like, physically. He couldn't stand. He's broken, but worse is mentally, man. And this is the thing, man. He's broken mentally. And he never broke before. He's now broken mentally. What does this tell you about other heralds? 
That they are weaker? No, that they are all fucked up in the head too. But I mean, he's definitely my favorite Herald so far. Man, he's he simply, the... I don't know, badass, wild. Okay, but shall we now jump to... What is the next? No, we can go to Kaladin and Dalinar parts. Yeah, that was quick, quick one. He is now completely united with Dalinar. He got, like, he got promoted to a place of Fort Dan. And that's almost like, you know, being really high. Oh, light Dan ice. of Light Eyes, man. Not, you know, yeah. yes. So. It's unprecedented. Let's just say it like that. But apparently, you know, world is kind of moving to a better place when you have a person like, uh, what's his name? Dalinar. Dalinar on top. Maybe not for long, man. Maybe, but, but so he, far here it is looks the, good. Here is the maybe the most important part of, of Kaladin and Dalinar's story is that, I don't know if you noticed that Sil really hates Shardblades. Of course I noticed that. And you know, and I, remember, connect, I remember from that vision when they kind of tossed it. No, not only that. Connect it with that same vision. But it was described that those shard plates and shard blades of those radiance, they lost their glow when they tossed them. When they left them. Yeah, but how can I connect it? To be honest, I don't see. It's very much connected. But my mind cannot understand it. Man. It's understandable that your mind cannot understand it, but you know, it will it will be a little bit better in, in book two. There will be more hints. But speaking of visions, there was here, Dalinar realized that, you know, he's getting the visions that are kind of repeating. Not and only there, that, man. You, you, you know, in last episode, you were like shitting on these vision, visions. They lied to him. They didn't lie, man. They are like, like movie. And you know, Dalinar, yes. Dalinar was speaking with Vision, but Vision, that Vision was not responding to him. It was just, you know, doing automatically its part. No matter what Dalinar said, it would respond the same. But this Vision that was being given to him, it's like, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but this Vision was, it was like speaking to someone. How did this person knew that somebody will pick this Vision up? Man, you know, first of Maybe all, who is this person? Uh, Almighty? Yes. They call him Almighty? Yes. So this is the actual God? Yeah, but he say, like, you guys know me as Almighty, so... You know... It's like, that I don't know if... You, you okay? You know that we spoke that about long, long time ago about those sixteen shards. Yes. This Almighty is one of the holder, one of the holders of one shard, and you know one what of the shard 16. that is. Well, honor it must be. And you know he mentioned another one. Yes, the cultivation. cultivation. Yep. And third one is odium. So there are three shards around here. And here is another very important thing. I, I don't know if you could get that. I'm not sure. But to all these powers, this surge binding, it's a thing of from this, this guy, from Almighty, from Honor Shard. So what is the magic system of cultivation? I don't know. What is the magic system of when I say magic system of of audium. Okay, I have a, I have a guess. Tell me. It's void binding. Yes. What okay, is another but... what is another magic that we mentioned many times? Could it be this uh Shades Mar, Shades Mar? No. I don't think oh, so. Oh the, the the old magic? Old magic. Who is old oh. magic? But it's also gone, so that's the clue that, you know, Odium got rid of uh, it's, it's uh, not cultivation gone. too. It's not gone. Oh, it's kind. just kind of... Man, Night Watcher is old magic. 
he's he kind of pushed them. What? He kind of pushed them away. No, not pushed them, man. He, for example, you know, honor is dead. Yeah. He fucking, you know, killed him. But uh, this surge binding is still, it's not completely gone, so. Man, he, here is the thing, you know, this is like you, it's very complicated destroying Shard. You kill the owner of Shard, right? Yes. And it's called splintering, that event. Those shards are part of something bigger. You so cannot, you cannot like, it, kill it's them. like energy. You cannot destroy that shard, man. It's it's very I complicated. See. I mean, you know, that shard is by you know it is destroyed, but its effects are just kind of you know are still there. And you know, in some previous work of Brandon, they, we 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 visited in El El uh, Elantris. That is the shard wall that Odium came there and killed. Shard that was there. And it caused, you know, like many changes. But there was still magic system there. It's 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 very, very complicated. I think, you know, it's too early for even me to, to go into this into this talk. Just you know, view these shards as energy. You cannot really destroy them. Even when you destroy them, their effect is still known. Okay. So I got also two more things that I want to talk about in this vision. Okay. So my first thing is, is it known, for example, did Honor... True, was he trying to send this message to somebody else? Or was he just hoping that somebody will pick it up? He didn't try to send it to anybody in particular. He just knew that at one point in time, there will be somebody who will get this message. Mm, I see. I don't know if this makes sense, but here is an, another very important thing. When he said to him, to Dalinar, you might be able to get him to choose a champion. He is bound by some rules. All of us are. Yeah, that's another hint as to how these higher up things work, I guess. And here is the thing, man. If another question for you, two questions for you. First of all, if Odium killed Almighty, if he killed, and he did, it's pointed here. Then why is he trapped somewhere, wherever? Why isn't he active right now? Who? O Odium. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's very <laughs> important thing, because whatever happened, it wasn't, you know, clear cut. He beat Almighty. He beat uh, Honor. It was a little bit more nuanced than that. It was messy. It was. I mean, he is trapped. So maybe the fight wasn't really clean or one-sided. Apparently, or maybe this guy sacrificed himself to seal him or something like that i'm not sure and okay. second thing man who will be the champion of of audio how can i guess that man you cannot this is, is just hint? you know very important known? question it is known in third book at the very end of third book i see okay but there is also another here he was saying and i don't know why i got this feeling I usually have these crazy ideas sometimes circling in my head and then later I'm trying to figure out why and I cannot explain it. But here when he was saying someone must unite them, I don't know why in my head it ringed that it's not just people of Rashar. I thought that maybe he was saying that somebody need to unite rest of Shard, uh, rest of these 16 Shard people. Like, they need to be united against Odium. Is there a possibility in that? Quite, quite possible, but, you know, I really don't know. I don't but know why that we, jumped we, in my we, head. We, 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 I, I think I already told you that, you know, Brandon, this Cosmere universe is quite, quite big. And there are quite a few books, you know, like, written on, on, then they are situated on different planets. 
but it is known what Brandon told to us that this is kind of center of events that this this uh, 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 this universe where stormlight is activate uh, where stormlight is happening will be like central for for the plot of his entire cosmere i don't know yeah, so odium is one of the most important characters i guess yes and this here we will get I think more realization and closure than in any other. This is like central, everything most important is happening right here, right now. Yeah, yeah I get that, I get that. But I think also we can speak a little bit about, unless you got something else from this part, there's also that revelation, and th that revelation was fairly short about Taravangian. Oh man, but you know, I, I, that, that is my big regret that I think I pushed you too hard. I think this would be like, this type of, you, your mind would be blown if you, if you didn't get this. If I yeah, didn't touch you too hard. But I, I, I'll be honest, I was left a little bit unsatisfied with it because, I don't know, I still feel like he, he is creepy to me, man. Can He's like, tra yeah. I mean, there's definitely, he's picking people who are not important when he doesn't have enough specimens. You cannot justify that to me, in my mind. I don't know what, what you are doing when you sacrifice people in this way. Okay, tell me, let me ask you this. If you had choice to sacrifice 10,000 people to save billions, would you do it? Man, if it worked like that, if I if I agreed with that philosophy, but you never know if those ten thousand people sacrifices would save billions. You you cannot know, man. It's possible, He's... but I don't. Did you notice that Taravangian is? He understand what he is doing, and he is regretful of what he is doing, but he deemed that it's it's needed for a greater good, and he is not happy. I think, you know, like, I think he's in the same position as, as Seth. I got that feeling. To be honest, I didn't get that feeling. I'm not happy with him at all. And I know that, you know, maybe in future something will change my mind. But so far, at this point, I'm extremely creeped out by him. Let me, let me ask you another question. Uh, very important. And this is in this end note where uh, uh, this Ketek is introduced. You know what Ketek is? Oh, yes, of course. This, you know, form of poems that they are same reading, you know, from either sides. And they are. I wrote it. You know, and you can kind of jumble it around, giving it different meaning. Yes, but th he here is the thing, you know, we can discuss about, discuss about that, this. But I don't know, I can just say, say to you, not only me, nobody knows right away what the fuck this, does this mean. But more important part for now is this. We leave it to His Majesty's mind on a strong day to puzzle out the meaning of why this is important. Yeah, that's a hint, because I remember what you told me before, that's Taravanjan. Yes. I see. But I, I mean, I don't want to wait Taravanjan to reveal this important message. I want to try to crack it on my own. What's the fun in waiting for some, you know, character that already knows it? Yeah, I don't know, you know if you think like that. Above silence, the, the illuminating storms, dying storms, illuminating the silence above. Yeah, because there that... is something about this man. This is not written for nothing. Oh, definitely, it's very fucking important. I just saying to you, I don't know. Okay, is there anybody else with you know that was trying to crack it? They are working with you know just theories, and, and you know, we is don't that, don't want to reveal. We don't have enough information. Nobody, maybe somebody guessed it right. But you know, we don't, we, even somebody who maybe guessed it right, did it by pure luck so far. But do you know, for example, any 
viable options that could explain this. Uh, I didn't read too many. Couple of couple of that I read, I I really didn't like. But he, okay. here is the very important thing. Uh, Brandon said to us that somewhere in book one or in book two, there is something that will have major impact on the very last chapter of this entire series. So maybe that is this uh, song? Maybe. Mm. Or may, you know, maybe not. Maybe it's something in book two. We don't know. But you know, this poem, so far in my opinion, is most likely candidate for, for that. Thing is, I was trying to figure it out, but then I read down below that you can split it into five, and each of those five would make sense. Yes. So now, in my head, you can kind of jumble it, jumble it around, and it would make sense. That's why it's too complicated. I know, but so, I... some things, for example, this, about silence. I understand, for example, if this is in a sense that if you go above high storm, it's tranquility. But you know, yes, it's kind, but... it's kind of a little bit spoilery. But you know, it's it's not much because you know, I don't know if 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 it's that. Dude, the problem is, man, that you can just this beginning above silence. You can read it in many different ways. Yes. You can read it like above silence, or you can read it above silence. Like they they have different meaning. I don't know. Hopefully, in this podcast, as we move on, we will you know try to crack it more and more. Not by the end of book three, for sure, man. Okay. But anyway, is that it? Of course not, man, because there is now a table. I oh, yes. sent you the picture. So, Fucking mad. so clearly I made the mistake with putting Yasna together with Shalan again. But, you know, for example, I don't know how to explain this, but you see, guys, now I changed this table. Now I know almost 100% sure which color or which uh, which order possesses uh, which aura, the color of it. And do you know how I got it? Names? What? How? Not names. You see the gemstones in this table of the book. You have sapphire, you have smokestone, you have ruby, yeah. you have diamond, emerald, garnet, zircon, etc. Yeah. Those are stones that have their usual color. Okay. Except for this, this one is the kind of the worst one for me, zircon. Because zircon, you, you can find it in a grayish color, you can find it in light bluish. So we will have to see for that in the future so zircon, confirmation. Zircon, why? Zircon is, you know, they are different Sapphire colors. Sapphire is blue, ruby is red, diamond is... Diamond is white, kind of. You see yeah. this Luc Lucentia? That's diamond. Emerald, emerald is green. Yes, this is pulp. Garnet is what? Garnet Purple. is blood color. Okay, blood. Zircon is... I don't know. Yes, but here is another important revelation here. The names, this number in the fir first names in this column. Yes. Those are... I, and I remember in the beginning I kind of thought that the names of month reminded me of names of Herald, and apparently that's true. I did not confirm yet 100% sure, but this yes, uh, this Shash, then we have Kak, Tanat, and Ishi. All of those are named after Heralds. Yeah. Now, I assume that the rest of these five are also named after Heralds, and I will color them correctly when I find their correct names, but I'm sure that one of the Heralds is similarly called to Nan, some will similar, for example, to this Vev, Pala, Betab. It gotta be. Yeah, I, I, I don't recognize all, but I recognize Jez. I recognize number three that I'm afraid to pronounce. I recognize Shash. I recognize Kak and not Kak as a dick, but you know, number eight. And I recognize Tanat and Ishi. Yeah, but basically that's, that's the thing we now have almost full name of 10 old heralds. We also know what, uh, what is essence of each. Here is also said that essences are connected with heralds too. So now we have connection with that. We got a bunch of new information here. 
But basically, so far for now, this is the information that I got. You see, for example, dust bringers, they are white for me for now, because I don't know to which order they belong, to, to which herald they be belong, so I don't want to color it. Whenever there is something that there is no color on it, that means, you know, it can be anywhere. If I had to draw this, actually, I don't want to. I don't want to. Because, you know, I, I will just say to you that you definitely, you know, nobody of those Yasna, Shalan, and Elokar, they are definitely not dust bringers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just put them there because it's like orderly. I don't know if you get that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to put them somewhere where, you know, there's no order or nothing. You know, it's, you know in, in book two, we will find out Shalan and Yasna, what orders they, they belong to. Yes, but also now that you said it, those divine attributes, they are also helping. Because protecting and leading, that's definitely, you know, what Windrunners represent. Yes. So all these other primary and divine attributes, they are hints but for future. But here is the thing, man. Protecting and leading, it's also kind of a trait of Dalinar. But I don't know what, what are you trying to tell me. But I mean, I don't know, guys. If you like this table or if you, have, if you know it's something that I missed, you can, of course, write uh, in the comment section below. If you saw some mistake that I made, you can also point it out, because of course I'm noob, I just read one book, but so far this is how I feel about it. So, is that all? That's all that I got. So, what were your impressions of, of this book? Oh man, I'm amazed. I don't know, like, so far guys, you, you probably don't know this, uh, I was introduced long time ago into fantasy somebody recommended me game of thrones and that left big void because after i finished five books something missed from me and then momo is the person who got me further into fantasy he introduced me to wheel of time once i finished wheel of time that was i don't know 14 or 15 books i cannot remember anymore 14. yeah i was extremely sad you know because once something comes to an end and there is no more you know, it simply leaves void inside of you. Then I got into Malazan, and I almost kind of finished all of that too. And I didn't know what's next. Like, I know that, for example, trilogy sends short, short fantasy. They, they will never satisfy me. I need something big. And thankfully, again, Momo recommended me Stormlight, which is apparently supposed to be this huge 40 books big fantasy I know Stormlight is planned to be 10, but you know, his entire Cosmere universe is, is planned, I think, to be almost 40 books. Oh, man, I plan to read all of Cosmere books, so to yeah, me but that's 40 for, for books. For me, you know, going into Brandon felt very natural after Wheel of Time, because, you know, you as you know, Brandon finished last three books of Wheel of Time, and I really, really don't think anybody, except maybe Robert Jordan could have done a better job finishing those books and i'm i'm not 100 percent sure that robert jordan could have done it better because i really think that he wrote himself kind of in a corner he left too many threads and you know brandon really did as 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 a good job as i could expect from you know somebody who who didn't start the series who didn't write that series originally I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. I remember in the first episode, and at that time, in first episode of this podcast, I had no clue just how heavy meaning is behind those words. But I don't know who said it, you or me, but we are extremely lucky to have Brandon. And after this book, I realized it 100%. This, is, this man is genius, man. Yes, this man, you know, this I, I was, series I was, is amazing. I, I was watching a couple of days ago some YouTube video from one very good YouTuber called Daniel Green, and he's doing, you know, like, he's fantasy uh, type. And he, he had, like, you know, is Brandon Sanders, uh, is Brandon overrated or not? And, you know, there are many guys who are, you know, dubbing him, like, greatest fantasy writer ever. And, you know, I'm not sure that he is, like, yet there. But he definitely have potential to be there. Because I never 
so guy who is like writing books so fast like you know Steven Erickson for me is uh, I think greatest fantasy writer of all time but you know Brent Owens is you know and Steven is fast very very fast writer and Brent Owens is I think two times faster than him yeah we definitely need more fantasy I know this uh, he I, I know it, it doesn't matter if you think that if he is greatest or not but I think that right now he is definitely the most important one and you know most popular one also to be honest man I don't care who is the greatest writer of fantasy what I care about if I could clone Brandon Sanderson Steven Erickson Robert Jordan uh, clone Martin Robert if Jordan, I could clone them, get nothing because he is dead uh, yeah we may, <laughs> maybe know, some know, DNA I cloning know. but if I could clone them and make hundreds of them and tell them all to write each their own fantasies I would do it the more the merrier that's how I think when you read, whenever I read any Brandon book, there are some Brandon's book, especially his early ones, that I didn't enjoy too much like Elantris. It was a little bit heavy to me. But even in that book, man, I was amazed by his ability to write a magic system that felt like so scientific, so compact, and so natural, so believable. And so fucking unique. And in every new book, he does the, you know, in every new series, he does different magic system that is, oh, I'm always blown away by it, man. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, I 100% agree with that. And I cannot understand it because my mind, usually how it is, if I would ever try to write book, my book would be heavily influenced to stuff that I read somewhere. Like new ideas doesn't come to my mind easily. So I can never understand people who are creative. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know how you make up something that did, doesn't exist. But I also love his world building, man. This world of Roshar felt very unique. And it's very, in my opinion, very well realized. It's believable world, man. That is completely different from ours. So far, you know, it felt epic. Exactly. But, you know, we, we might have, you know, I, I'm not sure what our next episode will be. Will we dive straight into book two? Or we will maybe, you know, make full episode about, I don't know, something, some, you know, Something that we will pick. I'm not sure. Whatever it will be. But you know. Stay tuned. And you know. I hope we see you guys next week.